Live from Studio B at the McNeil International Film Studio, here is Professor Mark McNeil. And where are we located? In beautiful Baja Tustin. Baja Tustin. Today we're going to talk about aggregate demand. Um, aggregate demand is the relationship between the aggregate quantity of real goods demanded and the price level. Well, this whole idea of aggregate if, if we look at a single market for peaches, for instance, we can look at the demand for peaches. And on the vertical axis is the price of peaches, and on the horizontal axis is the quantity of peaches sold that day or uh, uh, demanded that day in the marketplace. But this is aggregate. This is not any one good. It's all goods. So how do we count the quantity and price of all all goods that are demanded in the economy because you can't add apples and oranges. So what we do is we, d we can't add uh, units of cars and, uh, and uh, medical services and uh, units of peaches. So what we do is we convert the quantity demanded to its dollar value in constant dollars. So the real quantity of goods demanded in the economy measured in constant dollars worth. So we can add the dollar values of each of these. Goods demanded. So, and the price level, how do we get the price of everything? The price of peaches, the price of medical services, the price of cars, etc. And the answer is from the price level. There's a video that talks about how we get price levels and how we get the prices of everything. So we're measuring the price. And so any point on this aggregate demand curve tells you at this price level P1 this is the aggregate quantity of goods demanded Q1 and if the price level changes to P2 then the aggregate quantity of goods demanded will be Q2 so in this case this would be a change in aggregate quantity demanded it's a movement it's a movement from one point A to another point B here along the, the aggregate demand curve, and it's caused by a change in the price level. So when you change the price level, you get a change in the quantity of goods demanded. You move from point A to point B along the graph, and that's called a change in aggregate quantity demanded. What then would be a change in uh, aggregate demand? And the answer is a change in aggregate demand would be a shift of the entire aggregate demand schedule. And what would cause this shift? At every price level, the qu aggregate quantity of uh, goods demanded increases. That's a shift. And what would cause this change? Well, it has to be something besides um, a, a change in, in the price level. We have a relationship between price level and real goods demanded, assuming everything else that will affect consumers decisions about demanding things is held constant. So what are all of these constants? And the answer is there's a lot of them. Uh, the components of aggregate demand are four. They're the four types of spending. So this aggregate demand includes all consumption spending, all investment spending, consumption by households, investment spending by businesses, government spending, and net exports. So anything that changes one of the components of aggregate demand uh, would cause a shift, either an increase, that's a shift right, or a decrease, a shift left. So, in the case of consumption spending, um, well, well, I'll go through it in just a second, but anything besides a change in the price level, because that's included in this graph, would cause a shift, that's a change in aggregate demand. Uh, why the negative relationship? Why is it that when the price level goes up, the uh, quantity of real goods demanded goes down? Well, there's a negative relationship for any particular individual good in any particular individual market. When the price of that good goes up, the quantity goes down because of what are called the income and substitution effects. But both the income and substitution effects relate to the price of that good assuming that all of the other prices and things are constant in the economy. But this is not like that. This is the price of all goods. And, and um, so there is no 
uh, income effect, there is no substitution effect to consider. So why is it that when the price goes up, the real quantity of goods demanded goes down? Because of the wealth effect of a price level change. Turns out that if the price level goes up, it decreases the real purchasing power of a fixed amount of income. So uh, Harold and Maude have saved all their lives for their retirement years, and sure enough, uh, they finally have saved half a million dollars, and that's what they're going to live on for the rest of their life. And so they start their retirement. If the price level doubles, if the price level goes from, P, from 1 to 2 here, then the, the purchasing power of that $500,000 has been reduced to $250,000. And so, if the price level goes up, the purchasing power of a fixed amount of money goes down. That would be the case with anything like cash, uh, bonds, anything, uh, money stuck in a safe deposit box somewhere. Uh, and so, when the price level goes up, people will cut back on their purchases because their real wealth has uh, decreased because of the price level increase. That's the first reason why, when the price level goes up, the real quantity of goods demand goes down. The second is called the interest rate effect. And you have to remember that interest rates have four parts to them. One is, where's the place here? One is real interest. That's the opportunity cost of taking somebody's money away from them for a year and, and, not, and them not having the use of that money or the benefit of it. The second is expected inflation. Nobody wants to lend money if, in fact, over the term that they've lent the money, say a year, uh, the inflation is going to decrease the purchasing power of that money. When they get paid back, they want to get paid back the full purchasing power, not necessarily the full dollar amount. So if the inflation rate is 5%, they want 5% back just to cover the inflation part of the lending. And in addition to that, the real interest. So whenever the inflation rate goes up, whenever prices start rising, interest rates start rising to take account of that higher um, inflation. And when interest rates go up, it affects decisions about borrowing, particularly investment decisions, but also uh, people can't buy the Escalade with uh, 1% anymore. And it's harder to carry uh, credit card debt when the interest rates go up because they have to pay uh, higher interest payments every month. So that's the second rate reason. When interest rates go up because of inflation, that is a price level change, then uh, people cut back on their purchasing power. And the third is the international trade effect. This assumes that if the price level in the United States is going up, price levels around the world are not necessarily going up. Those are held constant. So if the U.S. price level goes up, people will stop buying as much U.S. goods and buy more from the foreign country. So that explains why the U.S. aggregate demand uh, when the price level goes up, people um, shift out of U.S. goods and into foreign goods. So those are the four, I mean, those are the three reasons why there's a negative relationship between price level and real aggregate quantity demanded. So some of the things that would cause uh, changes, shifts in aggregate demand on the consumption side, if incomes of consumers change, if the wealth of consumers change, uh, that'll affect their uh, consumption decisions, how much they want to consume each month. If the taxes go up, that leaves less spending power. If taxes go down, uh, real uh, disposable income goes up. There's more money left to spend for the typical household. And then expectations about the future. If, if consumers expect that the future is going to be rosy and their jobs are secure and so forth, uh, they tend to spend more out of each uh, income. Uh, but if they start getting nervous that they're, they might lose their job or th bad times are coming, they tend to reduce the amount that they spend uh, out of current income every month. So that's the consumption part. What would cause businesses to change their investment spending? Anything besides a change in the price level? Well, expected profitability. Everybody's always looking at the horizon, seeing is it a good time to invest and do I, will I be able to sell the stuff that I'm going to uh, produce when this investment starts coming online. When technology changes, a lot of companies have to keep up. They have to adopt a new technology, and that causes uh, uh, increases in investment spending. Um, governments uh, provide incentives to invest. Uh, sometimes it's tax breaks. Sometimes it's, uh, I don't know, tax credits, tax uh, uh, deductions, uh, etc. 
uh, or they tax the profits. And so that can create disincentives for investment. So any kind of government uh, policies. Government is going to spend what it spends. You can talk to the Congress about what determines that. And finally, net exports. <clears throat> If for some reason uh, the United States starts uh, buying more from the rest of the world than the rest of the world starts buying from us, then if it's not related to the price level change, it would cause a shift in aggregate demand. And uh, relative incomes in the two countries will cause that shift. Relative price changes in the two countries. Exchange rates change as well. And when the U.S. Uh, dollar changes in value against the other foreign currencies, that makes uh, uh, imports more or less expensive, and that'll cause shifts. And trade policies, if we, uh, if the United States starts uh, going after other countries for this or that, then that would cause that shift as well. Anyway, the big one is consumption. Consumption is 70% of spending, 65, 70%. And finally, the multiplier, the spending multiplier. The spending multiplier says when a dollar uh, gets spent. See, uh, I, I read my grandma's uh, uh, mattress, uh, and she's got uh, ten thousand dollars there, and I go hoo hoo, and I go and spend it, and I buy uh, trinkets and bling and so forth with it. Uh, when I spend that ten thousand dollars, that becomes income to whoever uh, sold me the stuff and got the money, got the ten thousand. With that income, the that person will go and buy something else and then those people will take that money and go and buy something else which means money is spent and respent and spent and respent and so a dollar of new spending uh, will have some multiple effect on aggregate demand and the relationship is a change in spending in my example I said a change of ten thousand dollars times the multiplier will equal the effect uh, uh, the change in aggregate demand and this delta, delta means change. It's a lazy man's way of writing change. So in this little diagram, I have this initial change in aggregate demand. There's the shift. But then if we let the multiplier effect run, then we end up with a final effect on aggregate demand out here. And uh, the business of these multipliers is very speculative. Uh, some say it exists and uh, some say it's like the tooth fairy. Uh, there's an active debate in this and arguments and various calculations, and it's interesting to follow if you ever get into it. All right, we've covered aggregate demand. That's it. I'm happy if you're happy.